All right, so uh, good evening and welcome to this uh, joint presentation through uh, Serena Russo and uh, MTA Institute. Um, this webinar is to provide information on uh, available subsidies for employees out there. And um, I'll actually just hand it over to uh, Steve to go through the presentation and uh, start to talk about some subsidies for you. Okay, uh, welcome to the webinar. Um, Steve Wyborn my name from uh, Serena Russo Job Access. And I guess uh, today we really want to demystify uh, what's available through Job Active in terms of support for both um, new workers and, and for employers. Um, and there's a range of funding that's come into place from the new job, of, job active contract which started in 2015, which really is aimed at getting job seekers into, into work early, rather than uh, previous contracts where you might find that um, there were wage subsidies available and support mechanisms available, but only available after somebody had been unemployed for a very long period of time and might have had barriers to employment and, and significant barriers to employment. Government shifted that a little and now we're able to front end a lot more of those services to make sure that you guys as employers get the best opportunity to access support at the beginning of the unemployment journey rather than waiting for somebody to fall into a cycle of unemployment. So um, just to go through the first page, you can build a job ready pool of candidates with targeted pre-employment programs. These are programs that are designed uh, and delivered with, in partnership with MTA. Institute um, that allow um, students to understand the, the, um, the automotive sector and the industry um, so that by the time they come to you, they've already got a really good understanding of what the role is going to be like. We like people to be able to make educated choices about the industry they choose, and we're able to fund those programs out of, out of a, a thing called employment fund that is available to all job active providers to support um, pre employment. Secondly, there's a range of wage subsidies, and we'll spend a little bit more time talking about those. Here in Queensland, there's some particularly generous wage subsidies looking at accessing both those available through job active providers like Serena Russo Job Access, but also through the Queensland Government's Youth Boost um, Program. Uh, one of the other things that you can do is um, if you've recently hired uh, somebody, a candidate from Serena Russo Job Active, or indeed any job active provider, um, your new starter may be eligible to receive what we call in-work support. These are the sorts of things that allow that person to easily transition from unemployment to work. For example, if there's somebody that's, um, that's been out of work for a little while and they're struggling to pay for their fuel for their car or they've got to pay registration for their car to be able to get to work, well, we're able to support them with that. We're able to support them with tools, we're able to support them with uniforms, uh, um, Protection, uh, protection equipment, those types of things with our in-work support. Yeah, which is a very handy um, mechanism, I think, just for the new starters in those jobs. So absolutely, yeah. we we'll see so many people put fall out early, Paul, because they don't want to tell their boss that they're struggling to get to work because yeah. they can't afford fuel, and that's yeah. that embarrassment. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Like working back with us, we can actually support them, yeah. and it takes that away. It makes them feel like right, so everybody's working to help me and stay in the job. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And that you know that first few weeks is critical. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I think the next thing that we talk about is um, there, as we said, um, local people for local businesses, and that's really important. Uh, if you look at the Serena Russo Job Access business, for example, we've got 94 sites around Australia, yeah. um, but we've got over 30 sites here in Queensland. Uh, if you're based in Anala, you can recruit candidates that live in Anala. If, yeah, you, yeah. if you're based in Strathpine, you can recruit candidates based in Strathpine or Bundaberg or whatever. Yeah. And that's really important. It means that you know, we, we go through the process for those candidates and making sure that they're able to get to work, they want to stay in that community, and you don't have those issues around long travel times. Yeah. Also, yeah. for areas where you've got a particular cultural aspect within your business, if your business has a, a, bit, a cultural base, of, um, it might be around um, refugees or, or, or something like that in yeah. your area, but you can recruit people from that background. So you've yeah. got that better connection with community. Yeah. The same goes with Indigenous recruitment as well. Yeah. Um, we're certainly doing a, an enormous amount of, of wonderful work of re engaging uh, Indigenous people into the workforce um, local. So is there how many offices uh, all over Queensland? Or yeah, something? so for Serena Russo Job Access, we, we go as far as um, north as Bundaberg, yep. okay. you know, down down to the Tweed, yep. okay. and then um, we're out as far as Laidley uh, yeah. uh, to the west. But 
this same information applies for all job active providers, and that's really yeah. important. I guess today I want to I'd certainly talk about what Serena Russell Job Access can do, yeah. but also understanding that the things that we can promote and talk to you about here, you can certainly talk to, say, for example, you're in Warwick, you can you can talk to your local providers there and they can yeah. offer the same sort of oh, okay. yeah, yeah. stuff. Absolutely. Um, and then linked to um, the Australian apprenticeship system, of course, and, and you know, converting that new person from a, uh, a labourer or, or a worker, you know, uh, in the in the workplace into the into structured training. We always find that giving that career path and that yeah. ongoing ongoing learning, is, particularly structured learning, is really important. So we can help link with that, the Australian apprenticeship system. Excellent. Um, and um, as we said, there just benchmarking it against national recognised. Um, um, Qualifications and pull that's your area, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, how valuable it is for both employer and for the candidate yeah. to know that their qualifications are recognised yeah. anywhere, in, anywhere in Australia. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we're going to um, never underestimate that. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead. So, yep. so I guess try before you buy. <laughs> The, the great thing about um, you know, engaging um, candidates that come out of a pre-employment program is that straight away, day one, when they come to you, you know that the person's got some basic productivity. Paul, you know, we, you and I talked about the fact that by the time somebody comes out of one of your programs, they know their way around the workshop. Mm -hmm. they, they, they feel more comfortable in the workshop and it's both um, an easier sort of transition for them and for the, for the employer. Uh, with a new person coming into a workshop, and I think that's really important. But I think the other things that are available is that employers can have a look at the skills that people have got before they before they make that recruitment decision, and that's important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they can they can gauge your candidate's commitment. I always talk about that. I, I'm never too concerned about the candidates that, that um, withdraw from a pre-employment program. Mm -hmm. I'd rather they withdraw. Early realizing, hang on, this isn't the yeah, yeah, for me. Yeah. Then, then wait till they've got a job and they're with an employer for, for four weeks yeah. and then they withdraw. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. That puts everybody to a lot of pain, yeah. you know. So yeah. I'm as interested in the people that don't that don't can complete. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Those are the ones that are are really committed. I know they're calling. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, as we've got there that last one, your gig mate, which is you know, yeah, certain learning automatic. Yeah, so that's a part of our employability skills training program, and certainly through the uh, job active. Um, providers uh, to get access to that uh, and, and certainly from an employer's point of view of looking for potential candidates uh, that's something that we uh, would like to see um, for industry uh, to get those candidates into jobs at the end of the day. Absolutely. All right. Now, the subsidies. The wage subsidies. Wow. All yeah. right. <laughs> Hang on for this one, everyone. Yeah, exactly. Look, I guess I guess there's a couple of things that, that we wanted to do here, and the first one is just to demystify the wage subsidies a little bit. And yeah. I, you know, um, we'll talk about some of the dollar figures in here, but obviously the first thing when people see these big numbers, ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, they um they say, what's the catch? Mm, and yeah. if I'm honest, in the past there might have been. Yeah. Um, in in contracts, in employment services contracts, up until this last one, in this job active. What tended to happen was that um, wage subsidies were offered only to support those with the most barriers to employment. Yeah, yeah. So we almost waited until somebody was almost unemployable and then said to an employer, here you go, here's 10 grand, will you take them on yeah. and cross our fingers? Well, the great thing about this new contract is that what it allows us to do is put those those incentives in place really early yeah. in the work, in the, in the, um, in the, in the employment, um, Phase, if you're unemployment phase, so it's more aimed at getting people back into work as quickly as possible, rather than waiting for them yeah. to um, to be unemployed for a period of time. And you think about it, it makes common sense, doesn't it? Yeah. All of a sudden, you've got somebody that's not no longer um, no longer uh, tracking um, benefits, you know, uh, yeah. social welfare. They're contributing through yeah. um, um, payroll yeah, and all those sort of things. Government to it, employers to get their access. Makes it economic sure. sense. So that's really important to understand. So if I just go through it here, if you just have a look, um, the federal government incentives, $10,000 for employing a mature age person over 50 um, into, into your workplace. Um, up to $10,000 for employing a young person between the ages of 20, 15 and 29. Um, six and a half thousand dollars for, for um, employing a parent returning to work, yeah, right. um, which is great. And then six and a half thousand dollars for re recruiting somebody of Indigenous um, heritage um, or um, a long-term unemployed person. Yep. And and I guess one of the things, Paul, that I always um, 
ask employers, have you recruited anybody from any of those cohorts? Yeah. And of course they go, yes, we have. Yeah, yeah. And I say, well, there is a chance that you missed out on that incentive by not going to be a job acting provider in the first place. Yeah, right, okay. And we, we often look at talk to employers and we can look in the system and find that they might have taken on three or four of our yeah. of our people over a period of time, but because they didn't they recruited straight off the street. They didn't come by our us. Oh, okay. So we didn't realise and we couldn't offer them the... the so they have to be a job active candidate to be eligible for the... They do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so absolutely. that straight off the street person wouldn't attract any of that? Well, yes and no. Well, I guess, um, you know, the, a large portion of our of our candidates find their own employment. Yeah. So okay. if you're advertising, you might, you know, one of our candidates might come to you direct. They might not come through us. They yeah, might come yeah, to yeah. you direct. You think yeah. you're a great young person. Yeah. You put them on, but because we didn't know about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we weren't in a situation to be able to offer you that way. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so you, you could be missing out. And all we say there is ring us first. Yeah. Um, okay. Even if you're looking at somebody, if they're currently not working, it's likely they're with a job active provider. Ring yeah, us yeah. first. Yeah. And yeah. just ask the question so you don't miss out. Yeah. Cost of a twenty cent phone call or thirty cent phone call, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you could you could find yourself eligible for um for significant yeah. um, wage subsidies. And of course, on top of that, here in Queensland, you've got um the twenty thousand dollar youth burst for people fifteen to twenty four, um and um and fifteen thousand dollars for employers um for employing somebody who's been long term unemployed. And again, we will be able to, your job active provider and Serena Russell Job Access will be able to um, guide you as to whether or not you're eligible to yep. receive that additional funding yep. uh, and help you through the process of applying for it. It's actually pretty simple. So yep. if you think about that, there's up to sort of $30,000. Yeah, I was going to ask the, the combination of both federal and state centres there to, yeah. to access. And there's no there's no problems with accessing both of them. Yeah, right, okay. Um, they, they are designed in a way that the employer um, can make a really low risk decision yeah. of bringing a new person into the workplace. Yeah. I don't think employers will ever use this to say, oh, we'll put an extra person on that we didn't think we needed. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when you're in that recruitment phase, you should be at least asking the question because yeah. it certainly means, say the person doesn't work out, because yeah. that happens three months in, well, the financial cost might not have been as, as, as heavy because we were able to access those wage subsidies. Yeah, right. Or even better, you know, when we're talking about young people that we might be looking at putting under under pressure, we know that they're not as productive. Yeah, we know yeah, that they, won't, yeah. they might make some mistake. They might break a tool or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, this just lessens the risk for your employers. Yep. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. So those, uh, those, those funds there, then in addition to that, if they then get enrolled into an apprenticeship on top of that, there's positional funding? Absolutely, or? yeah. yeah so okay. the, the state government funding to support their training, but yeah, yeah. Uh, paid organisations like, like the... Um, the MTAI, and yep. also um, there's an additional four thousand dollars worth of worth of incentives um, available yeah. through the federal government, and again, that's available in addition to this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, good to know. Mm. All right. Um, we'll just uh, I know time here, so we would say it was fifteen. So uh, we'll just um, we'll go through to build retention. I think we've basically uh, covered that. Yeah, there, it's, it's really just about. Um, making sure that people understand, uh, look, that, that, that employers go back to their job active provider and, and let them know that somebody's not working out. And we can, we've got this thing called employment fund that really does allow us to spend money on those candidates to keep them in work. Yeah, love it. And then uh, just our last uh, last slide for uh, for this session. Well, I guess that's really just a summary. Yeah. It really just says that you know these are all of the services that are available to you as an employer. Um, by going to your local job active, hopefully to Serena Russell Job Active in the Absolutely. areas that we are, but, yep. um, but any job active provider will be able to offer you a range of services and it is absolutely designed to support employers yeah. to take people on. Yeah, yeah. brilliant, excellent. Well, that's, uh, that's some great promises to have there, uh, Stephen, I think. Uh, at this point, just if there's any other questions, um, there's the emails, uh, email there, uh, but also uh, Serena Russo and the number to contact. Obviously, through um, the association, we'll assist and uh, certainly to do with the training organisation as well. Um, thanks very much for your time, Steve. Yeah. Appreciate thanks that. And uh, yeah, look forward to uh, you know, trying to help out young people, old people, yeah, just uh, get people back into work. Get people back into work. Yeah. That's it.